In this video, I'm going to give you 15 tips for first timers visiting the Philippines next on Jaycation. Kamusta, Jaycationers? Welcome back to another video here in the Pilipina series. And today we are going to sit down and talk about 15 tips for first timers visiting the Philippines. Or maybe some of y'all haven't been back for a while and you don't know what new rules and stuff are and things to expect. So I came here in 2024 and I would like to present to you 15 different tips. So let's get with it here in BGC Bonifacio High Street in Taguig. This is Burgos Circle, one of the roundabouts here. There's many roundabouts in this area and it's just a beautiful place to walk around. First things first, when you get to the airport, you're gonna wanna take Grab. Grab is basically the Lyft and Uber of the Philippines and it's pretty darn cheap. Way cheaper than uh, Uber or Lyft ride in Vegas and the United States. When you get into the city, if you're here in BGC or Manila, they also have motorcycle apps. There's various ones, but the most popular one is Ankas. A-N-K-A-S. So if you feel safe enough to ride these motorbikes, uh, you can hitch a ride on a motorbike and it'll get you to where you need to get to faster, especially in this Manila traffic. But honestly, to be safe and in this Manila heat, I would always just go with a grab ride. They cost anywhere from 150 pesos, which is like three US dollars, to four, five hundred, depending on how far you go. And that's not even that much, I'm telling you. I, I traveled to Cubao and that was only about 350 pesos. So. That's pretty far from here. So definitely check out Grab and Ancas. For Americans, I know the tourist visa is about 28 days without you having to go to immigration or pay uh, extra fee to stay longer. Now, you can set an appointment with immigration. I did a video with Jacko a long time ago. I'll link that down below about the process I did in 2018. I'm sure it's almost the same these days, but I heard that if you stay here past 28 days, you can just pay the fee for your overstay when you leave the country so you just got to save a few thousand pesos and figure out how much that is pay immigration on your way out at the airport I heard that was the easier way but I like being safe so I go to immigration and make sure I get that visa corrected for how many days I'm here usually I did the longest I ever stayed here was six weeks and I was able to get that extended easily and just made an appointment online so make sure you check that out that video will be linked down below having access to the internet is very important especially if you need grab and ancas to get around i have t-mobile back home in the u.s and worldwide you're given up to five gigabytes uh fast internet and then once you pass that i think it just the data quality just gets super lowered. Now it is really cheap to get a SIM card here in the Philippines. Globe and Smart are the dominant companies here that have SIM cards. I went with Globe because it works really well here in BGC, Bonifacio Global City. But I also heard from family members and people outside of Manila that Smart works better in the provinces and all that. But internet's not gonna work great everywhere in this country, so don't expect even your SIM card to operate well when you're in places like Shargao or Karan or places that are not as developed as Manila and BGC is so for the most part I went with Globe I only had to top up once in the one month I was here and that was only like two bucks to top up uh, I had to get more data because I do live streams make sure you get yourself a SIM card it will only help you here and there are plenty of Globe and smart stores all around that sell it especially the malls here this next tip is for a digital nomad like me. I upload a lot of 4K YouTube videos and I need decent internet. And when I did all of my research, I ended up figuring out that BGC is the most well-connected internet place with fiber, optics, and fast connections. Now, my Airbnb was okay. It took me about two and a half to three hours to upload a 4K video, about 20 minutes. But the internet was fast. I was able to watch all my YouTube and all my Netflix. I was able to upload my videos in a decent amount of time. I'm sure you'll find faster internet speeds here in BGC. Just make sure you ask your Airbnb or ask the hotel how fast their speeds are. You can also go to these many cafes in BGC and connect. But when you go outside of Manila, especially in Batangas or let's say Tagaytay, it's not a guarantee that your internet's gonna be super duper fast. So especially when you go to Shargao or even Karan, like I said, internet's gonna be hecka slow. So make sure you download like a internet speed 
app just to see how fast upload and download is. But if you are here as a digital nomad, I would recommend BGC for sure. It is well connected and you'll be able to get fast internet somehow somewhere in this town. So I know a lot of y'alls are budget backpackers and want to save money while you're here. But if you do come to the Philippines and you're staying here for a long time and you do have the cash flow to set up a base, the two places to set up a base is either here in Manila in BGC or other places of the Metro Manila area like Rockwell or the new Estancia. Even Makati, even though Makati I feel like is getting a little outdated, Alabang. If you can find places around there and set it up as a base and then you can make sub trips like I did. I left for Boracay for three days, I left for Baguio for one day and I just left all my stuff in my Airbnb and used that as my base and it was very comfortable. Now I had the cash flow to do it. I know not all of you can but if you can Manila or Cebu are the two big ones because Cebu has most of the flights all around the Philippines domestically and so does Manila. Those are the two cities where you can find anything and everything and if you wanted to travel these mini trips in and out of those cities, I would definitely suggest doing that. Or maybe you do half your trip with a base in Manila, half your trip with a base in Cebu. That would help you out immensely and it would keep you comfortable because it's fairly cheap. I paid only about 1200 for my Airbnb for the whole month and air conditioning, perfect for one, and the internet was great. So definitely Manila and Cebu as your base. Most of the Philippines is hot AF and people underestimate the heat and the humidity. Like right now, I'm starting to sweat. I'm not even moving around. I'm just in the blaring sun doing this video. Your energy levels are gonna be crazy already because of jet lag, regardless if you're traveling halfway around the world, but you're also gonna be energy drained a lot because if you're here in BGC especially, you're gonna do a lot of walking, especially midday. So save time for little naps during the day because your energy is gonna be waning. Uh, <laughs> The humidity is crazy, you get tired a lot faster here. So make sure you stay hydrated and make sure you put on your sunblock and all that good stuff because it's hot and humid, especially in Metro Manila. Whew, it's crazy, even Baraka in midday got pretty crazy, even by the water. So just be prepared for the hot and humid life here in PH. So you ask, why are Filipinos mall lovers? Why do they like to shop and hang out? Well, you know, they're Barcada. They wanna see their friends, see their family, and especially on the weekends, they wanna get away from the house because it's so hot hot and the malls are perfect free places for them to go to use air conditioning without putting their electric bill in jeopardy and they act as an oasis so malls here in the Philippines there's so many of them they act as an oasis to keep you cool and you can hang out there's plenty of food options especially in the SM malls the mega world malls there's just so many options here, especially in BGC. This is BGC High Street. If you need to cool off, just right here. Like I, I just could turn right and go inside the mall and it's already nice and cool and nothing beats walking by a door and getting blasted with the cool air conditioning. It's amazing. I kind of sort of dove in on this in the heat and humidity tip, but sunblock is a must for sure, but also insect repellent, especially if you're going into the jungle or going into the provinces over there, you will get bit up. Believe me, I've seen my cousins getting bit left and right. They're like covered in bites. Now, I don't know why mosquitoes don't like me that much. I didn't even use insect repellent, but I did notice that I had a couple of bites on me. So make sure you bring your bug spray here here and SPF 50 bring your face sunblock facial sunblock I've learned is different from regular sunblock so now I'm using facial sunblock which helps me out a lot keep my face protected from the UV rays of the sun your next tip has to do with hydrating here in the Philippines and you do not want to drink out of the top tap water and you do not want to drink the ice from restaurants like Jollibee or just random restaurants. I don't know, I just don't trust ice. And I've gotten sick in the past to where I've had ice in my drink and that messed up my stomach just because, you know, my stomach's just not used to whatever they have here in the Philippines. So what I do, first things first, is I go to the marketplace and I get two six gallon jugs of water and I just fill up a water bottle. And if you're staying in a hotel, all these hotels, especially the decent ones, they have filtered water in the hallways for you to fill up because they don't want people getting dehydrated and fainting in their property. So they do supply filtered water. Make sure you use that, believe me. Uh, do not 
not drink out of the faucet and I don't even brush my teeth with the faucet water. I use the drinking water. I have a drinking water bottle by my sink and I use that because uh, you can't ever be too safe. I've gotten sick way too many times in the past. I know it's been the past but I don't want to chance it. So make sure you get your mineral and drinking water at the grocery store. Thank me later. The next tip is jet lag takes time unless you're Taylor Swift and you have a private jet and jet lag is a choice according to her. Well, for us regular folk that take economy flights to the Philippines from the US, it'll take more than a couple of days to truly adjust. I've been here for a month and I don't think I've been truly adjusting. I've been waking up at four or five in the morning and then going back to sleep again. <laughs> it really took me about four or five days to just somewhat get a grasp of the jet lag here, but you may never shake it. It's so hard traveling this far to this part of the world and changing times and you're in the future. From the west coast, it's 18 hours plus in the future right now. So think about that. It's still Friday there and it's Saturday morning here in BGC Manila. If you're staying outside the city or you're not in a high rise in Manila and your walls are kind of thin, even in Manila you'll still hear it. You might be woken up early in the morning by the roosters cock-a-doodle doing all over the place. <laughs> Luckily enough in my Airbnb I didn't even hear any roosters cock-a-doodle doing <laughs> but in Boracay I heard a few of them and in Baguio as well. So when you're outside you're definitely gonna hear roosters at some point in time and usually they start just before sunrise so that could be anywhere from 5 30 in the morning to 6 30 in the morning and if you're in the province and you're hanging out with family and you're staying in their house and you're not used to that that's gonna wake you so make sure you either have earplugs or you just are prepared for the roosters waking you up in the morning at an early sunrise time and also it doesn't hurt to wake up during sunrise it's actually nice and cooler it's a good time to jog a good time to go for a walk and it's usually in the mid 70s around six o'clock in the morning as i experienced yesterday in Boracay. my next tip would be for visitors not just filipino americans but everybody that comes here whether you're australian chinese japanese to learn a few words in tagalog it's really not that hard ingat means be safe or take care so remember ingat paki usap means please salamat means thank you mabuhay means long lived <laughs> so that doesn't mean hello it means long lived you can also use kuya or ate kuya for a male ate as a female now that's for like your older brother or older sister but you can use it with the waiters around here and just say hi kuya or kamusta kuya or kamusta ate kamusta is hello obviously and uh, if you know somebody's older than you like auntie or uncle age or even grandma age you can use po at the end so if you want to say thank you say salamat po or okay po thank you po you can use your taglish and then just end it with po po that will help you out just a couple of phrases not too many that's it astig means cool there you go kamusta or you can say good morning magandang umaga or magandang hapon or magandang gabi good morning good afternoon good night if you want to say you're welcome it's walang anuman over here in the philippines you're gonna see a lot of gcash accepted gcash is kind of like a venmo or a paypal of the philippines and i was told to download gcash and use it but i don't have a philippine passport or philippine id or even like a resident paper to prove that I'm verified to use it here in the Philippines and luckily I was able to get the money that I put into it out that's what she said so if you're not holding a Philippine passport or have a resident card or something like that don't get Gcash use your credit card I usually use Chase Sapphire Reserve you can also get the preferred card there's no foreign transaction fee the rate is good and always make your purchases in pesos here and your other credit cards would probably have a better rate for the most part so make sure you check with your credit card to see if there's no foreign transaction fee and if their rate is favorable you can do all that research online don't get gcash especially if you're an american it won't work use your credit card or bring crisp 100 dollars bills make sure there's no creases or anything in them and go to a mall like market market and go to sandry's and exchange your money what I do is I exchange $300 at a time at the time of this it was like 55.90 was the last time I withdrew money and that was actually pretty good so at the airport obviously the exchange rate is not as favorable for you so once you get in this city exchange your money 
for sure. Another tip you should take into mind is be patient. Be patient at the restaurant, be patient at the hotel, be patient with anybody here in the Philippines because in America we're like so let's go let's go let's go we're hustle and bustle but here they will take good care of you with service but sometimes if you're in a hurry it's not gonna take the fastest time there's a certain way servers have to express your order back to you and ask you to confirm your bill ask you to confirm your charge on the credit card machine and all that good stuff even in the hotels when you check out they do room checks around here and after you ch when you check out it takes about 10 to 15 minutes for that room check to happen and you might be having to catch a shuttle or catch a flight and you're in a hurry so make sure you give yourself about 20 to 30 minutes to get that checkout done and the room check and just wait in the lobby you'll thank me for that and don't be afraid to flag people down here don't be afraid to flag down your server and flag down people at the stores to help you out just say bill out po and they or bill out kuya bill out ate and they'll give you your bill or if you want to order just flag them down because sometimes they're not gonna always keep coming back to you so make sure you just uh, let them know let it be known you gotta assert yourself a little bit here so that you can get a little faster service the last tip here in the philippines for you first timers is self-care here is super cheap want to get a mani want to get a pedi want to get a facial it'll cost you way less than in a western country so if you want to get a massage same thing so if you need to do self-care or even dentistry right you want to crown fix you need to get a root canal or need to get your teeth cleaned dentistry here is even even cheaper so make sure if you're here for a longer amount of time that if you want to do some self-care for your body and your soul you can do that here in the philippines i got a facial since i've been here and my face has been amazing it's been glowing i wish i could actually do it one more time and man, get ready to sweat, guys. All right, Jake Asianer, so that were just 15 of the first timers tips that I came up with, but I'm sure there are plenty more. And the Jake Asian Nation is so nice, and I know plenty of you have come to the Philippines, so if there's a tip that you would like to share respectfully in the comments section, please do, because I know there's more, and we can always help our fellow travelers out. And the people here in the Philippines get around the Philippines even better and have a better experience because that's what it's all about. The power of the Filipino is strong. There is a lot of great things that Filipinos do. Very great family aspect, very great community aspect here. So if you need help, just ask. If you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up. This is one of my final videos in the Philippines. So maraming salamat sa inyong lahat. We may be back, we may be back. So stay tuned. And uh, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please do. And we will see you guys in the next one. And in the words of me, Stay traveling, Jaycation Nation. Maraming salamat sa inyong lahat. Mahal ko kayo. Stay traveling, Pilipinas. Mabuhay!